Hi, I'm Patrick, and this is the Mach-E Vlog. Today, we're here again with Blink Charging, and we're gonna talk about some of their new exciting announcements, so let's go. Hi, Patrick, it's good to be with you again. My name is Mike Battaglia. I'm Senior Vice President of Sales and Business Development at Blink Charging. Awesome. Well, thanks for like talking with us today. Uh, we talked with you uh, virtually at CES last yep. year. If you guys want to check out that video, we'll put it up above. But uh, tell us, you know, what's exciting and new with Blink? Wow. Well, it, boy, it's a loaded question because the EV <laughs> charging space is, is an incredibly exciting place to be right now. And Blink is the second largest EV charging company in the United States right now. Wow. We offer a full range of charging solutions for uh, our, our commercial customers, our residential customers. And I can tell you what's new and exciting at Blink today is a few new products that we're introducing here at the LA Auto Show, both on the hardware side as well as on the software side. Very cool. Yeah, I, I see that you're coming out with like a 30 kilowatt fast charger as well as like a level two charger for fleets, right? Correct. So that's really a big step for Blink. Uh, historically, we have uh, manufactured and sourced our own level two equipment. Mm -hmm. But now here at the LA Auto Show, we're announcing that we are actually going to be uh, manufacturing our own 30 kilowatt DC fast charger. Nice. So this is uh, an application for fleets. Uh, for commercial applications, uh, outputs a thousand volts. Uh, nice. So it takes advantage of all of the latest uh, electric vehicle architecture that's being introduced into the market by the OEMs. So like Lucid and Hyundai with their higher voltage packs, the Mach-E has a 400 volt pack, so it won't necessarily get the, the full advantage, but you guys are ready for the future. Correct, and that's the whole point is for us to standardize on a thousand volts across our DC fast charging line in order to future-proof that infrastructure that's gonna be Perfect. in the ground in the coming years. Exactly. So 30 kilowatts, so a lot of people like as you know, EV drivers, we're always looking for the 350s, the yeah. 150s, the 250s or whatever. So 30 kilowatts, why, why 30 kilowatts? Uh, it's, a, it's a great question. Well, to put this in perspective, a 30 kilowatt DC fast charger will run you about ten thousand dollars right a 360 kilowatt dc fast charger will probably run you somewhere around one hundred fifty thousand dollars. wow so first of all it depends on the economics right that you're right. coming that, you, that, that you're putting out uh out there the second thing is the flexibility of the unit so for instance the 30 kilowatt dc fast charger can either be mounted on a pedestal or it can actually be affixed to a wall so the footprint is very, very cool. small as opposed to you know the larger the larger right. units uh, and it's really, the application is really more for that right balance between trying to charge a car fairly quickly, mm -hmm. but not taking up a lot of space in uh, electrical infrastructure, all of those things. Right. So like this could be, it won't be like uh, out in the middle of nowhere between major cities. Correct. But it would be a, like maybe a movie theater or that, a coffee shop. For or, sure. Uh, again, yeah, all of those applications, uh, we have a lot of fleet customers that are interested in this that have some dwell time associated with it with that vehicle in a parking right. lot so they can they can charge it maybe it takes an hour and a half to charge it hour and 45 minutes and that's that's really adequate for them uh, yeah. to get that car up and running again. i could see like the so. uh electric school buses yep. where they have a pretty large battery uh, level two may not meet the needs for them but like a 30 kilowatt would be perfect it, it so. does it, absolutely and what's interesting about what you just said patrick is that you know, one of the things that's key about the EV charging space is that it depends what the application is for the customer. Yeah. So you, you bring up a great example of an electric school bus, right? These are big vehicles, they have big battery packs, but we're actually doing a lot of work with school districts where we're providing 19.2 kilowatt, 80 amp level two equipment that adequately charges their battery overnight. Because if you think about a right. school bus, you know, they go through the school day, then they park it overnight, and they don't really need a DC fast charger to, right. to charge that, right? So it really depends on the application. And it sounds like because you guys are focused a lot on fleet stuff, that you, uh, I, I'm assuming you have some great software so that like the school district can see like which buses are using which amount of electricity and balancing things out so that they're not overtaxing their power source. Yep. So there's a couple different aspects to the software that gets implemented with EV charging. So there's what I would call uh, the mainstream software. Right. And the mainstream software is what uh, enables transactions. It also enables a customer that has uh, chargers on their, uh, on their property mm -hmm. to log into a portal 
and to see the activity that's associated with that charger. So they can see is it, you know, is it functioning properly? How much energy is it dispensing? Um, if, if, if it's a revenue generating machine, how much money am I making from that right. charger, right? But then there's a second level to this. So that first level is adequate for smaller fleets and you know, probably less complex use cases. But then when you start to get into more complex fleet arrangements, we actually have fleet management software that does all of that, plus yeah. it tracks uh, drivers real time, and it also allows for energy management to optimize when to charge that vehicle to ensure that it is the most cost effective, but also that that vehicle gets back out on the road at the time that that fleet needs it to be on the road. So right. we start to get into more sophisticated things, but you know, it Blink provides all of that. That's really great. So as for normal EV drivers though, you guys also have the Blink network and mm -hmm. Blink home chargers and everything. Do you want to talk a little bit about, like for us, normal day-to-day -day drivers, yeah, what Blink offers? So, you know, the statistic is that roughly 90% of all yep. charging events are going to happen at home, right? So the residential EV charging market is going to be huge and Blink obviously plays in that market as well. So, you know, behind us here, we have a couple uh, examples of our residential chargers. We have the S4 charger over to the right. Uh, we have the Blink HQ200, which we had uh, originally introduced at, mm -hmm. at CES over to the left. Both of these are now shipping. So nice. uh, these are both 50 amp uh, home charging units. So that's about as fast as you would yeah. want to install uh, at a residence. So these, both of these chargers allow for up to 12 kilowatts of charging power, and they also both enable, uh, have a mobile app uh, enabled feature where I can set what time I want to charge my car. Right. I can see a lot of the different um, uh, statistics associated with, with that charger. And can you adjust the amperage down if you don't want to charge that fast? You can, yeah. Perfect. And, yeah. and then these also will both in incorporate uh, what's called demand response. So what demand response is, is if a consumer opts into that program with the utility, oh, yeah. they actually give the uh, utility a permission in, uh, in different uh, events associated with the grid to actually right. dial back the, the power at that charger, right? Yeah, we were here in uh, San Diego in September when they were having some energy exactly. issues, we'll say, and they were talking about the potential of rolling blackouts, and that's the type of thing where it can say, like, let's turn it off between 4 and 9 p.m., which most people charge at night, so it exactly. really didn't affect anybody. And, and I mentioned the, the lower amperage because, and this is something that I try to emphasize in a lot of my videos, like the Mach-E can charge faster, but I, yes. I generally charge it at like 32 amps yep. because to me it's like the slower the better, the less taxing it is on the on grid, the, the less taxing it is on the battery. Correct. So there are some advantages with being able to charge at a slower rate. Uh, and, and even I avoid fast charging as much as possible yep. because it's slower is better yep. in some cases. So. Generally speaking, correct, yeah. Yeah, so that's really great. So there's a, a wide variety of things and uh, what, what's your website, Blink? Charging. Blinkcharging.com. Blinkcharging.com. Yep. Yep. So definitely check it out. If you are a small business owner, you should definitely look into some of their fleet management stuff. They are an innovator in this area, and this is going to be huge, huge, huge in the coming years. So definitely. thanks a lot. Thanks, Patrick. All right. See you again. Thanks.